Hello everybody, I'm Gloria Copeland and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Sister Billy's back, Billy Brim from Prayer Mountain in the Ozarks and she's got some good things from, a, from the book of Genesis. We're going to start way back, back at the front. The yeah, amen. You know, you said, you just now said Believer's Voice of Victory. So we looked yesterday at um, how that God breathed into man and he became, Onkelos translates it, a speaking spirit. spirit. Yeah. And we talked about how science divides uh, matter on the earth into three classes, animal, vegetable, mineral. But the Jews see the animal as divided into two parts, um, the speaking ones and those who don't speak. That's the way the Jews see it. Yeah, that's the way they see it. So man is given speech. God breathes into him, he becomes a, a, a speaking spirit. And so he is given a voice. And so that's, uh, you, you said the believer's voice of victory. There's so much in that. My son preached recently, Chip, and I heard him preaching it. And he said this phrase that I remember, if you have a voice, you have a choice. Well. You can use your voice the way God meant you to use it to work with him. Yeah and speak with him positive things you and create. If you have a voice. If you have a voice, you have a choice. That's and the so truth. And so God did. He put a will in man. He put yeah. a will in him, and he gave him a voice so that he could he let speak. Man, in other words, we would have not had a choice. We couldn't have chosen. No. But now, and, the way and God, God wanted us to choose him. And that's what he wanted Adam to do and that's, Eve. That's right. But they, they and what he the gave course. them to do with their voice. Yeah. And we're going to see as I we see study that. about, uh, isn't and it? And you know, we've been raised so much. Well, we have absolutely been raised, and you can have what you say spiritually, our mm -hmm. spiritual raising. But that adds another another part to it yes. right there. We, he gave a man a voice. And a choice. And a choice. <sighs> so we could choose. We could choose how we use our voice. Yeah, that's right. Now, he meant us, Gloria, to that's use. That's why you make Jesus the Lord of your life. You do it with your voice. You make a choice. You, and you have to do it with... Later on. Listen, guys. We're, <laughs> we're going. <laughs> we're going here. We invite you to our party. We're having a C-Law party. Ah, amen. We're thinking over it. And I mm -hmm. told Gloria, I said, Gloria, I don't even really know all I'm going to be talking about because it's coming to me like a revelation. Yeah. That's um, good. I heard your husband preach on fire and minister with fire. And I... I then uh, started looking from the beginning and these things that are coming to me about prayer and, and voice and choice. It, it's amazing. So we're welcome to our party. No kidding. Praise God. No this kidding. is going to be good. And so now, now we're going to go down to, we're still in Genesis chapter two. Okay. And I am reading from uh, the Hebrew translation. Genesis chapter two. And we're going to, we're going to read verse 18. Uh, Genesis 2:18, Hashem, and we know that is the four-letter name of God, Yod Hey Vav Hey, which uh, people guess at being Jehovah or Yahweh. He took the man mm -hmm. and placed him in the Garden of Eden. Now, this word "man" right here, he took the man. That is the word Adam. We say Adam, and it means of blood. Mm. He took the man, Adam, and it reveals to us. Names reveal things. It reveals that this is a creature of blood. Now, God is not held to creating creatures of blood. Angels don't have blood. Actually, if you get right down to it, God doesn't have blood. He's a spirit. Yeah. Now, Jesus had blood, but he shed it. And there was a time... When God, you know, it says that he was a, he was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Yeah. God was going to create a man. He knew that the man would fall, but he knew he could fix it. But what it took to fix it was one of the, somebody from heaven had to go to earth and live in a man's body and which is a body of blood and shed it. So, uh, Adam, Adam was the first creature and he, he gave him this name, Adam. Now. I had never thought of that, Billy, about the blood. The blood. Mm -hmm. No, he didn't have, nobody ever had blood before Adam. 
It's a creation of God. And somebody said, well, he got the blood from the Father. Well, the Father didn't have any blood flowing in his veins because he doesn't have veins. But the Father created it with his mouth. So you yeah. could say in a way he got, but you can't put physical laws of genetics into this. It's a mystery. Mm. He got from Mary. That's he awesome. got from God the Father. But the part he got from God the Father, he spoke it into being. And he names him the first Adam. And that's the part we get from and God And that's the, the part. Right. Now, right here I put this note, the brim note. Dom is blood in the Hebrew. That's the Hebrew word for blood, dom. So this reference to man as a dom shows him to be a creature of blood. Now, in this family of words, and uh, all words uh, grow from a root, in the Hebrew language, like a, like a hub of a wheel. And the spokes go out with all the words that are in that word family. So all of these words are in the same family. Dom is the Hebrew word for blood. And Adam means he's a creature of blood. Adama is earth as being red soil. And remember, it says that his body was made from that earth. Ad Adama. Uh -huh. Dome. Adama. 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 What would we say there? We would say... Soil. Oh, earth. earth. Earth, okay. Yeah. Dome is the color red in Hebrew. And Edom uh, was Esau. So, you, you, you know, they said he was kind of reddish. So yeah. uh, the plan of redemption is going to be through his blood. God's going to make a creature, put him on earth, make him a creature of blood. And then if one will go and live in a body like man's mm -hmm. and will live a perfect life, then he can pour out his blood because the life is in the blood and it will, it will settle the sin question. So one agreed to do that. And I like mm. to read uh, from, and I didn't print this out, Gloria, but I have my Bible turned to it. Just write down this note, people. It's uh, Hebrews 9, 14. This describes two, two times. The first time this happened was in heaven in a heavenly council meeting. How much more shall the blood of Christ, the anointed one, who through the eternal spirit, the Holy Ghost, offered himself without God, without sin, without spot to God, God the Father. Here we see God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. We see the word Jesus offered, I'll go, I'll be the one that goes. And he offered himself through the spirit to the Father to purge our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Now that's what we're for, to serve the living God. So this happened in heaven in a council, in a moment, an eternal moment someplace in heaven, will one go and, and the word Jesus offered himself through the spirit to the Father. There you see the Trinity. Well, it also happened on earth when he was nailed to the cross. You have the fulfillment of it. We have the Father we have the Son through the Spirit offering Himself to God the Father. So uh, He came, and this is the plan of redemption. The life is in the blood. Yeah. So He was made a creature of blood. And this verse, we're going to go back to it and look at another part of it. In Genesis 2.18, Hashem, Yahweh, took the Adam and placed him in the Garden of Eden for two purposes, to work it and to guard it. Uh, that I'm reading from the Arts Girls, remember, to work it and to guard it. The King James says that he put him in the garden to dress it and to keep it. That word keep means guard. Now, Adam knew there was a being from which earth needed to be guarded. Earth was the uh, former kingdom of Lucifer turned Satan. So God told him, you got to guard this place. You got to guard your garden. And you've got to guard it from uh, the one, actually, we know how he came in the garden, Lucifer turned Satan. But Adam was not, this didn't surprise him. I mean, he knew there was something to guard it from. Then in Genesis 2, 9, and I'm going to be reading this again from the, um, from the art scrolls, from the Hebrew translation. Out of the ground made the Lord God, no, this is King James, out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This is always, I heard someone talk about this, actually read it somewhere, and it, it intrigued me that Eve may have had her trees mixed up because she told Satan when he tempted her, 
but of the tr fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it lest you die. The tree that was in the middle of the garden was a tree of life and God wanted them to take a bite of it. If they mm -hmm. had taken a bite off the tree of life, then they would have been able to live forever in a perfect state. So she was a little mixed up on that. And then she added to it, you don't get to touch it. So uh, that's just in, in driving that's by, we'll just, we'll just throw this out. You need to be sure about what God said and the word and not add to it not take away, not get mixed up on it. Right. And how do you do that? You feed on it. You feed on it. Yeah. You listen to good teachers of the Word. You feed on it. Listen and then, to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, listen to the interpreter of it. So now we're going to go to Genesis 2, 18. And this, um, this is uh, when God, um, oh, we'll just read it. Genesis 2, 18. This is from the King James. And Jehovah, L-O-R-D, capital L-O-R-D, so we know that's yod heh God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Now, most people, you'll just hear it over and over. The woman is a helpmate. She's a helpmate. There's no such thing as one word, helpmate or help meet. It is not one word. It means a help meet for him or corresponding to him just like him, face to face, over against him. Young's literal translation of the Bible, and remember he's the one that did the uh, analytical concordance of the Bible. He translates it like this. And Jehovah God said, not good for the man to be alone, for I do make to him an helper as his counterpart. A helper. A helper as his counterpart. The picture is, She's exactly like him, face to face. I mean, they, they match. E even in, the, uh, in, in, in creating and children, they match face to face. She's like him. So that's what it means. Now we'll see a little bit more about it as we go to Genesis 2.20. And the man calleth names to all the cattle and to fowl of the heavens. I'm reading again from Young's literal translation. And Adam calls names to all the cattle to fowl of the heavens, to every beast of the field, and to man hath not been found an helper as his counterpart. See, God's going to make him uh, a counterpart, but he wants him to see there's nothing in the animal kingdom like him. They can't talk. Yeah. And he wants Adam to see that there's nothing like him. So the Chumash, the Chumash, this is a note that I gave from the Chumash. In the Torah's concept... A name is not simply a convenient convention, but it reflects the nature of each creature and its role in the total scheme of the universe. Thus, mm. as we find over and over in the Torah and in the Bible, the Tanakh, the names of people had a profound significance that expressed their mission. Adam had the power to recognize the essence of every animal and name it Accordingly, having this insight into every creature, he realized that none of them corresponded to his essence, socially and intellectually. None of them had the power of speech. And he did name them. Uh, I remember I was in Israel when my uh, Chip's uh, baby son was born. And I called home to see what you named him. They said, well, he named him Caleb. And I knew that in Hebrew, it's the word Kalev and it means dog. <laughs> And I didn't want to be calling him dog. So I said, well, did you give him another name? And Chip said, yes, we named him after dad, Kent, for the middle name. I said, well, I'll call him Kent. Well, it wasn't one day till I was down at Mr. Pomeron's bookstore. And I'm looking at Hebrew words, a book on Hebrew words. And this man, I'm, he's since become a good friend of me, mine. He's a scribe. And uh, he said, oh, I see that you're interested in Hebrew words. He said, did you ever consider how Adam named the animals? Hmm. And he starts with a discourse on this. He said, every one of them came forth and Adam, Adam named them according to their, their dispositions. He said, let's take the word uh, Kalev, for instance, Caleb, dog. He said, Kalev, he named the dog. He said, now what, what does that word show you about uh, its essence, the dog's essence? And I said, I don't know. He said, well, divide it into two words. Well, I did know those two words. The last one is Lev and it means heart. Mm -hmm. Call means all. He said, the dog is all heart. 
It's mm. faithful to its master. Interesting. It's very it? faithful. And he named it according to that essence. And I said, ah, he said, it literally means wholehearted, wholehearted. I said, oh, I can call my grandson Caleb. It means wholehearted. So uh, that's how Adam named the animals. And he had the ability mm -hmm. to look into them and to see what their essence was and name them. The Hebrew names are those that stick from now on. Now, he saw that there wasn't anyone like him. And God wanted him to see that. The very next verse says, verse 21, 221. And now I'm back to reading from the Humash again. So Hashem, God, cast a deep sleep upon the man and he slept. And he took one of his sides, not a rib. There is a word for rib, but the Hebrew word is not rib here. He took one of his sides and he filled in flesh in its place. Then Hashem fashioned the side that he had taken from the man into a woman. And he brought her to the man. And the man, Adam, said, This time it is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This shall be called woman for from man was she taken. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and cling to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Now we have two new words introduced. One now from, man is whole. Yeah, now man is whole, <laughs> sure. And one side of man, that's yeah. right. It's one side of man, not the rib of man. I'm telling you, people have misunderstood the Bible so much. He took one side of the man. They were together, and they were named. Their name was Adam. Their name was man, was Adam of blood. So God took the man and took one side of him, and from that he made the woman. But look what the man so called. So they were one. They were one. But look at what the man called her. We see these words introduced. And, oh, brother, after your husband preached on fire, I'm reading this. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Here we go. And the man, Adam, said, This time it is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This shall be called Isha, I-S-H-A-H. -H. For from Ish, man, was she taken. Therefore, a man, Ish, shall leave his father and mother and cling to his wife, Isha, and they shall become one flesh. Now, I'm going to ask them to... Now, no, no, I, I better read a little, little more of the Chumash note. Adam named her gender Isha, woman because she was taken from Ish, man. Now this is their note. This is their note. The Hebrew note. Left unanswered, however, is why man is called Ish. That name comes from the root word Ish for fire. There's something about man in his essence that's tied to fire. Remember Hebrew names, they're not just out from the blue. They mean something. So I've asked them to put up something. I made a, a chart, and I've asked them to put up. Here, Gloria, is one for you. Thank you. These words. You're going to see first, we're going to put up the, the, the chart. That's the three words. Esh is the word for fire. Now, in Hebrew, you go from right to left. So we see that the Hebrew word has aleph and then sheen. Aleph. Okay. And then sheen. And that's okay. the word esh, fire. Now we're going to look at the word for man, ish. You see the aleph? You see the sheen? But there's a little letter in the middle. Here's the aleph. Yeah. Here's the sheen. Yeah. But there's a little letter in the middle. Yeah. And that little letter is called yud. Yud. The yud. Mm. And this ish is man as the male gender. Now we're going to see isha. You see the aleph as the first letter moving right to left yeah. and the sheen. But then you see another letter added. It's the hay at the end. So we have isha. ish, mm -hmm. isha, and he has added little letters to their names. And the letters that he had added is yud and hay. These come from the four letter name of God. I'm going to ask them to show you that now. You see the four letter name of God? Going from right to left, Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey. God added, now this is the name of Yahweh, Jehovah, He is, 
He, he was, he is, he is to come. God added the yud to ish, to, to esh. He added the yud to esh to make ish for the male. He added the hay to esh fire to make isha. So the two letters he took from his name were yud and hay, and that is the word yah. We say it every time we say hallelujah. Hmm. Praise to God. What did he do? He took a part of himself and put it into the word fire. And he made the word for male and he made the word for female. Ish and Isha. Remember when he took uh, to uh, Adam and he changed his name. From now on, you're going to be named Avraham. He added the letter from his name, Hey, to Avraham. And he added the letter hey to Sarai and made her Sarah. So each case, he's taking part of his name, yod hey vav hey. Oh, the name of God, it means so much. We haven't even tapped what it means. Mm. And he took a part of that name and he added it to the word fire. And he made male with the yod added. And he made female, isha, with the hey added. He added God to the fire. Bless the Lord. There is something about man that has fire in him. Now, this is their, their, their comment. The presence of godliness in human beings is expressed by the letters that are added to their names. Yud in the name Ish and He in the name Isha. These two letters spell the divine name Yah because God must be present in the union of a man and a wife. If they allow him in, their union is godly. If not, they are left with ish, a destructive fire that will not only harm their own relationship, but may well unleash a conflagration that will harm all around. We're going to come back to this yeah. essence of fire. But there's something about us, Gloria, that got me after I saw Ken ministering fire. After he laid hands on people, they turned red before my very eyes. They got miracles. There's something in us that is a fire. And that fire, which can be good and create or it can be bad, it can be lust, it can curse. That fire, mm. there's something about the fire of man and the coals off the altar and the fire of God that creates. Mama. And we're going to be looking more at this in its relationship to prayer. But when I saw that there's something basic in man, when God uses the root word of something, he used fire. You don't want to miss any of these. Billy and I'll be right back. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.